Hi guys, this is Peter and today I'll show you an uh, example how you can use the snow material that we created in my previous tutorial in the blueprints. And the example would look like this as the end result. So when you come closer, uh, the amount of snow increases. When you go away, it slowly decreases. There are other ways how you can use the snow material, for example, this one, while you shoot the object and the amount of snow increases gradually. And this is also pretty simple and you can figure it out by your own, but I will show you how to do that. So, let's take a look at the material, shall we? Mm, let's go into here, right? And I will bring it on the screen. Here we go. This is the same material, uh, not the same, but it has absolutely the same functionality and the same parameter names as the one that we created in the tutorial. So you can use it. You can use the one from the tutorials. And we have three parameters here. We have basic texture and snow mount. These are two that we will use. There's also a normal texture parameter, but for now let's not, not care about this one, this one, because well, with slight modifications, we can also use this, but let's concentrate on snow mount and basic texture. Basic texture. So we go to blueprints and we create a new blueprint. We derive from actor and we say snow proximity. Right. So here you go. As the root component. In the blueprints editor, let's add a static mesh, which will have our material displayed. So let's call it like this display cube, because I will be using a very simple uh, shape cube. And of course, you can use anything you want for uh, material or you know multiple static meshes. No problem with that. Let's add then a simple box, and its dimensions will be 128 by 128 by 128 and we'll be using this box to actually figure out if the pawn or any other object in our case overlap with it so if some if something overlaps with this box then we will modify the material parameter okay let's go to the graph now so first, construction script, the one is, which is being executed when you place in the editor the object on the level, or when you move the object on the level. So first, we don't want to create a uh, new material instance here in the Canon browser, because we don't want to flood the Canon browser with many material instances, uh, which are local for our level. So let's make it dynamically here, create dynamic material instance. As a parent, I will select, select my snow material, which is this one, Snow Gen 1. Okay. We have a return value, and as we want to use our material instance here in construction script and also in the event graph, which runs during the gameplay, we want to set this as a variable, promote as a variable, and we can call it as simple as that. And let's set several parameters from, from it so we can get it. And then we can do. Uh, sets color parameter value. And the parameter will be called the snow mount. So if you don't remember your parameter's name, you just go to material and you look here snow mount, basic texture. And value will be zero because we don't know, we don't want to have any snow on it when it just shows up. And then Let's set texture perimeter value for our basic texture, which is called just like this. Oh, sorry, basic, um, basic texture. Okay, and for the value, we will choose something as simple as brick clay old. Okay, and the last step will be to take our display cube, which is here now. So you can see it's called like a display cube. And we have this as a variable. We can get it as object. So now I have reference to it and we say okay, call its method set material. Go here. And we say material will be this snow material instance. 
So what does it give us? Now, when we play... Oh, sorry, of course we didn't put it on the map. Uh, we take it and we put it here. Now you can see the proximity box. And you can see the box itself with the normal map of something else. Hmm, never mind. Because we didn't modify it, just fine. But there are bricks here. So, of course, you can modify the normal map if you want also. But now, of course, if we change this to something like 5, remove it, or even, yeah, we should recompile it. You can see that the snow starts to appear on it, right? So we go back to 0 because we don't want to have snow initially on it. Okay, just fine. So this is all we needed to do here in the construction script. Let's go to the event graph. And before we start, of course, this is um, event-driven scripting, so we need to have something happening. So let's bind our function for add component begin overlap first. Okay, we just go here, we click on the on the proximity box, we add event. So everything that goes from here will be happening when there is an overlap beginning, okay? And for this, let's add a timeline because we want to, you know, smoothly increase the amount of snow. Okay. And let's just say that we open it and we add a new flow track. And this will be a snow mount. For example, the name here doesn't really matter. Uh, we hold shift, we click on the curve, and we add a new point. At zero, it will have zero. Then we click shift here, and click another point. At two seconds, it will have, for example, one. Doesn't really matter here. Now we can click these buttons to fit the curve to the view. And it's just fine. Now, uh, whenever the timeline updates, so this is like a, a smooth loop which happens in real time. It take it keeps track track of the time of the game runtime. So when this updates, uh, we need to set the material parameter value. And for this purpose, let's actually take our material instance because we have a reference to it here. I will say set scalar parameter value. Parameter well, parameter well will be snow amount and the value will be here. So now in two seconds the this value, because of the track we created, will gradually will increase uh, linearly from zero to one as we set it. When the begin over on begin overlap happens. Uh, so let's play, and we have it here, let's see, yeah, here we go. Of course the thing is that it doesn't decrease, right? So let's make it decrease. So we can just call another event, and I showed you one way of uh, creating this, um, let's say, event, or delegate, if you're a programmer, uh, but there's another way. We just have to take this box one, get it, and we set component and overlap. Let's make the save. Okay. Uh, so uh, let's now event begin play. I added this one. So whenever whenever the game starts, we bind the delegate of the own command beginner overlap to this. Uh, and this is the same functionality as that. But of course, you, you can see that it takes a couple of more nodes. So I showed you this way. And actually, let's try to see if this works. I'm not sure. <laughs> but the functionality is... It's the same actually, you just bind it. Reverse. Let's see. This is one, this is two. Yeah, great. 
So you can bind it like this, or of course you can just delete that. Go here and we say end event on component and overlap. Here we go. And reverse. And again, this is the same idea. And it works. So if you didn't get it yet, let me explain it. So uh, when this fires, this starts to play. And as it plays, it updates every um, tick. And as it updates, it increases the snow mount due to its own timeline from zero to the value uh, to the amount that we set here, which was one, right? But if this event fires, it starts to reverse. We can we can do other thing. We can say when it ends overlapping, we say stop, for example. Then what will happen is that it will stop in the place uh, where it was when we left the overlap. But for us, oops, sorry, for us the functionality will be the reverse. Okay, as simple as that. So this is a pretty simple and basic blueprint, and it works just fine. Of course, there are many things you can do. For example, you can uh, modify this timeline and you can take this point it was one then you can say okay uh, five let's fit it again it's compiled and we say play and then in two seconds the amount of snow will increase much more up to five for snow amount value very value and then it will fastly decrease Okay, so there are many things you can do to, in to improve that. I'm sorry, another leg. And one of them is to change the normal map. But my idea was to show you how to manipulate these variables and how to create some, some basic blueprint with it. So here you go the construction script and the event graph. You see, it doesn't take much time, it doesn't take much space. And there is endless, there are endless possibilities of what you can do with it and how you can use it in a level. I, ho I hope you learned something new. Uh, stay tuned for more tutorials, including the tessellation tutorial for snow material. And thank you for watching. Bye bye.